Hey everybody, welcome to the Rochester Real Estate Show. Jason Mancuso here as always with the Anthony Butera team joined today again by Shane Allen. So buddy. What's going on, man? How much? How much? We've got a uh, topic today, questions people should be asking their realtor in the home buying process, right? Yeah. What do you got for me? Yeah, and, uh, so, some contacts, Shane, Shane, anything marketing that you see from coming from the Anthony Butera team at Keller Williams Realty, this is the guy. He's the brainchild behind it and does an awesome job. He is also a licensed realtor and is building his career and doing a great job at it. So he's he's getting getting more and more into this uh, real estate game and and has the expertise at this point to be on this show. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've been like a year now. Mm -hmm. I think it was last month was a year of being licensed and stuff like that. So this is stuff that um, you know, working a lot with buyers. This is stuff that I think that every buyer should be asking their agent if they aren't. I think you're you're missing out on opportunities. Yeah. Um, I mean, great, great, great topic, right? Because yeah, I think there's just a lot of stuff that's taken for granted, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, as a buyer or a seller, just anybody in this process of, you know, doing something with a home, it's super important from, you know, just the, the roof over your head standpoint, but also like financially, this is a big deal. This isn't a, this isn't a pair of shoes or a pair of jeans or even a car, right? So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not too far off from buying, you know, my first home too. And these are questions that, you know, now that I've been on the other side of it as an agent, like, oh man, I really should have asked these questions, <laughs> like for yeah. sure. So um, I've kind of broken it down into two categories of like before you're buying and when you're actively looking at houses. So like yeah. from the jump, like get your, get an agent um, involved as in the process as soon as possible. Uh, even questions about financing, you know, obviously we're not lenders, we're not a bank, we're, we can't give you that type of information, but asking for um, referrals to people that they work with, that they know, like we're, we're experts in the market. We can tell you who is doing what, who yeah. does it well, who is going to get you to the closing table, um, who gonna, who's going to fit your situation. Right. correctly this is different lenders work with different types of people different types of situations better and um you know yeah getting I mean, the financing as soon as possible for sure yeah and i mean there's the the lender you know what lender to work with conversation can be a little tricky um and a lot of it right now relative to the market that we're in and relative to the market that we've been in for years now is you know what i always tell people is like look at it's your money. I want you to be comfortable with the, the the bank that you're working with, the person at the bank that you're working with, and the terms that you're getting, right? That's ultimately what matters most. So all of that is important. The market that we've been in is also a conversation around like, look at like, right or wrong, I'm just going to shoot you straight. And when you are using certain lenders, your offer is either perceived as being stronger or weaker. So, you know, in a competitive market, obviously it goes a long way when you're, you know, perceived as a stronger buyer because of the lender that you're working with. And these are the, these are, this is a difficult conversation as an agent to have because like steering is the term is illegal and it's not what we're doing to yeah. you know from the standpoint of like we want you to work with this lender because you know they're giving us some kickback which also is illegal so that's just not how it goes it's just a matter of like hey it's competitive out there and here's you know a strong lender is is what you'll be presented as working with so yeah you know, kind of at that point for most, it becomes, you know, fairly obvious. Um, but ultimately, like if there's a difference of lenders and like, you know, 
strong lender A can't give you the same interest rate that, you know, another lender can, then like, yeah, of course I want you to get the lowest rate possible. Yeah. So it's, it's a little, it's a little tricky, but it's important. Yeah. I think that, that, that is a misconception that people have, like people that were referring out, you know, we're getting some type of kickback from it. That's just not, not the thing, right. but I think it just, um, you know, I hear from people on our team, from other agents it's like they're they're not just going to recommend the one person to you they're we're going to give you a list of, uh, of ideas for yeah. you so you can do your own research i mean this is definitely a huge huge piece of this you should be doing a lot of your own research on this stuff and, and interviewing a bunch of people figuring out what's best for you and we're just uh well help, helping you give you the tools to to figure that out yep um another one is uh you know, as you're interviewing agents and stuff like that, asking them questions like, do you have references? Ask them about, you know, their history uh, in real estate. Ask them about what type of uh, type of work they've done in, in the area. And um, just ask them about, you know, what are they going to do to help you search your homes? What does that actually look like? And really like a lot of, a lot of real estate, it seems like it comes down to availability. So it's like, what is your availability look like? Ask them what the realtor is. And if that doesn't line up, then that's obviously that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a great point. And that's one that surprisingly really doesn't come off as often as you think it would. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe uh, arrogantly speaking maybe like you know our reputation is what it is to where that's that's the reason why i just said that but i mean i do think it's a relevant question for a buyer you know you you started that off with interview like yeah. you should i don't care if it's your best friend that's a realtor that you're choosing to work with you should be interviewing that person to make sure they know what the hell they're doing yeah. But also that the game plan that they have for you, they can speak to, and it's aligned for how you're thinking about it or how you want it to play out. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's also just like an obvious standpoint of like, you know, I mean, if 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 you're a buyer and you're looking in a certain town and that agent has never sold a property in that town, that's yeah. relevant, right? Mm -hmm. and and you know finding out that i mean it's more than just like is the agent willing to travel to that town like how much experience is there because i've done, i've more than often you know had whether it's somebody inquiring or somebody interested in certain areas i'm like i'm not going to pretend that i'm the the real estate expert in um wyoming county right like i don't practically speaking like traveling that far is difficult to do in business so like still happy to help but it may be better for me just to refer you to another agent if you're getting that back from the person that you're talking to then okay you know you're in good hands right yeah so. yeah i just highly recommend do your doing your due diligence interviewing Absolutely. agents make sure like um not to be sound like a you know holistic medicine person but like vibe make sure that that's right you know, yeah. you know that's a big word yeah. with the younger generations uh make sure the oh, vibes that's important. Are right. but also like community even it's like simple stuff like how do you communicate with your clients like if somebody's like oh i do calls but you're, you only like to text you know make that known and if they're not into that then okay right and if i only have a landline so it's gonna work yeah if your agent isn't gonna do electronic signatures. That's probably something you want to know too, right? Right. Yep. No, this um, is a great point. Just like, I mean, you mentioned vibe, but that's totally it. Like, yeah. can you can you vibe and jive with the person that you're going to be working with? If you can't, like, you know, you're not buying shoes from this person, right? This is mm -hmm. a major type of thing, and you don't want to get to the point where it's like, oh, I just want this to be over and. <laughs> I just hurry up and buy something so I'm done dealing with this person. It should not be it. Yeah, you're probably gonna be spending a lot of time alone in a, like <laughs> vacant houses with this person. You should <laughs> feel comfortable with them. You know, yeah. right. don't. It's gonna be terrible if you don't. Right. 
Um, so then like, this is more in getting into like, you've gotten through that interviewing phase. You're now looking at, at homes. This is stuff that I think you should be asking. Yeah. Um, community, having your agent communicate with the selling agent as much as possible. They're, they're, if they're a good agent, they're probably doing it already, but this is stuff you should be getting on them about. What, like, what does the seller really want? What are they really asking for? Stuff like closing dates, you know, what's included. Um, I feel like knowing that can really change what you're, what you're thinking about with an offer or whether this house is right for you. A lot of this stuff isn't, disclosed right away this is stuff that you know your agent's gotta uh, suss out with the seller's agent and i feel like not a lot of people like talk about that or know yeah. about that right well i think i think i could spin that concept into that can be an interview question too of hey mr agent let's just you know tell me about the process where i'm ready to submit an offer what do you do on your end yeah and that should be where the agent's rattling off, like, yep, you know what, the first step, you know, obviously we've seen the home, you're financially comfortable with, you know, the price range that we're thinking about, you love the home, otherwise we're not offering, period, right? But from mm -hmm. there, then it's like, okay, I go into overdrive and make sure that I am in communication with the seller's agent, make sure I'm finding out, you know, all these details, what's important to them, what's not, you know, what the competition looks like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And if they can't speak to that, then, I mean, you, you, you could be having a, a problem. And this may seem obvious, but, um, you know, I guess this can be a message to other agents too, if they're listening, like we do a fair amount of listings and the overwhelming majority of the time it's just an offer is emailed over and thank yeah. god email works as efficiently as it does because mm -hmm. we wouldn't have any other context that that offer was coming and there's yeah. no call to i mean it's not about like trying to grease anything right it's just like even even a simple hey i'm sending you an offer can you confirm that you got it mm -hmm doesn't happen the majority of the time in this industry which is comical and make sure that you're with an agent that, that, that at least does that <laughs> to make sure their email is received with the offer for sure so yeah yeah i mean i i had one of those just this past weekend like don't trust email because if i hadn't been in contact with the seller's agent uh this you know our offer wouldn't have even been looked at because i sent Offers were due for this house at noon on this day. I sent the email over with the offer at nine o'clock. I didn't get a bounce back message from Google saying that, you know, the email failed until 1155. Yeah. And then I was scrambling um, to get it to them. But, you know, having been talking with the seller's agent for a couple of weeks, you know, they were messaging me like, hey, where's the offer? So right. yeah. hopefully that, that helped. Yeah, good. Uh, good, here's point. One. good point. Here's another one. Um, what are house like houses like this really selling for? So this is something I I go over with my um, with my clients is like the list price versus sales price of the area of this specific home because you know when you know when uh, when an agent's putting your home on the market right they're doing they're comparing all the other houses similar to yours on the market and they're coming up with a price. Buyers agents can do the same thing. We can look at homes in that area, very similar style, yada, 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 to that house and tell you, okay, this is what homes like this have been listed for. Here's what the actual sales price of these are going for, just to give you an idea of where it might need to be to put yeah. an offer. Yep. Um, I go, I, I when I start off with my clients, I'm giving them like, okay, you tell me the area you're looking for and what you're you know, what you're looking for in a home and I'm creating a report for them like here's what it's going to look like in Webster here's what this looks like in Penfield here's what this looks like in Greece like just to give you an idea of what these different towns are doing because it's different just a mile down the road yeah um, but then with every house that they're you know they're looking at if you're 
have questions about like, okay, what, what should an offer be at? I'm not going to tell you, you know, that I'm not going to give you your number, but I'll tell you like, okay, this is what houses look like and what they've been right. selling for. Well, and it's a matter of like, you know, sure we can talk about a range, but just we've been in this market for a while now where there's not really any certainty that we can bring to the table. That's like pinpoints. Yeah what it's going to be it's it's totally variable and has been and you know that's okay there's there's ways to you know escalation clause as an example there's ways to you know kind of protect yourself as a buyer so you're not just throwing out stupid numbers and and negotiating against yourself but yeah yeah i mean i think and it's it's more than just let's look at the comps right it's like you said here's what it's listed for and here's what it's sold for because that can go in either direction like say you know a home sells for 250 or homes in the neighborhood sell for 250 and if that home is listed for 250 maybe a different outcome or scenario versus that home being listed at 199 yeah and also like just the real time market data whether it's talking with the listing agent or like we, you know, there's, there's an app that, that essentially registers all the showings that are scheduled that we can essentially see the activity. If you're monitoring it, you know, throughout the week or days in advance, and we can get a feel to see like, Hey, <laughs> they don't have any openings for showings. I, I don't know if, you know, there might be 50, 75, whatever, but it's a pretty active listing. We could pretty much bank on there being competition or looking at it to where it's like, Hey, I'm seeing the next three days. There's only one showing schedule. Maybe this thing isn't going to light the world on fire. Yep. And having that context. And then also looking at the pending data for similar listings and us as agents calling those agents just, you know, we can't tell you, yeah, it sold for this, but just to get a feel for the situation, how it played out. Like I always, I always phrase that conversation with another agent of like, Hey, I'm not asking you to tell me anything you shouldn't, but just, you know, you were listed in ABC street at 199. How'd it go? Was it crazy? You know, did, you know, that sort of thing. And there's a way yeah. to communicate as agents around that to, to not, you know, do anything that you shouldn't, but um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think you, you, you hit it right. Like up to the minute stuff, just because, yeah. uh, I mean, our market's been wild, but there's been times where it's like, okay, are we getting back to normal? Um, right. But, there can be lulls, yeah. Um, other more specific type of stuff, like flood zone, right? Yeah. Like New York, not a required disclosure, disclosure right? So other... Flood zone? Was that for a flood zone? Yeah, uh, it's on that. It's on that property condition disclosure. What I right. think you might be referring to is like you don't have to get into like, you know, like property taxes are listed, right? Yeah, like you, you know, it's not a requirement. To like this is how much we pay in flood insurance. Yes, but having you know just having the you know, I don't want to cut you off, but like you know, seeing where you're going with it, like there's so many intricate details within each property each sale that you know an agent needs to be versed on and you working with an agent should know that they are yep also things like uh you know homeowners association homeowners association fees hoa those are big um what is covered what does it entail for you <clears throat> um yeah if you're confused about those let us know um Recommendations about timing too. Uh, this goes back to kind of even the beginning when you're first starting to look, you know, you should have an idea of when you're trying to be in a home. Um, and this is something I feel like a lot of people don't have exactly nailed down, but this is something you should definitely be going over with your agent. Just like, is, I think a lot of first time home buyers more specifically, they think it's like, okay, put an offer, couple of days later, boom, got a house, but there's just, there's timing. You should talk to your agent about what are, what are homes like this or in this market? What does a typical closing look like? 
Yeah. What with my financing, what does the closing date look like for us? Yeah. And then, uh, and then syncing that up with. Well, not only that, but just like, you know, I mean, hopefully the agent that you're working with sounds kind of weird, but hopefully they're not just working with you. Right. So it's yeah. like in today's market, like literally meaning today, like, I mean, how's the process going with buyers? Like how many, how many homes do you have to show them? How many offers do you have to write typically? Like how much time does that take? Mm -hmm. um, and don't get me wrong. There's certain buyers that are more or less aggressive than the next, but like you could have the most aggressive buyer in the world. And that doesn't mean anything, you know, in terms of they're willing to offer a high number and be non-contingent and all this stuff. Like they, are likely to still lose out on at least a couple offers before they get one. So yeah. knowing, you know, what the, what that pulse is and how to combat it is, is an important type of uh, concept. Yeah. Picking back off of the timing, just talking to your agent about what your plans are for the home. Um, I mean, this is something your agent should be asking you, but this is, this is something you should be talking to them about like, Hey, yeah, I'm, I want a house and I'm going to have, I want to have a kid in here, you know, or I'm going to run, I have a home business and I, you know, this type of, that type of stuff can really change your search. And it's just stuff that, uh, yeah. you should be in your agent know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, stuff like expected utilities you can ask about or, uh, property taxes. That's huge. Obviously something you should know. Um, things like appliances, this is just like little stuff that people don't seem to ask about it. Don't assume that appliances are always uh, always included. Right. Um, that's something that you know us as agents can tell you if they're if that's something that's really important to you. I mean, everything's negotiable, so right. you can definitely figure that out for you. Um, don't basically the synopsis is don't be afraid to ask questions. They're not to yeah. sound like a sixth grade teacher, but there are no dumb questions. It's true. Get your money's worth out of your agent and pepper them with. Any questions, any concerns that you have, um, especially when it gets down to, you know, when it's, time, when it's time to write an offer, you're ready to sign, go through it, read it, um, ask questions. Uh, I go through stuff with my, uh, with my clients to explain to them, you know, section by section. But if you have any questions or concerns with anything, you should definitely be asking. Um, this is not an iTunes agreement. This is something you should read. Yeah. Um, a house, should... Not, a, not a month to month cancellation after. Yeah. Uh, deadlines too, uh, along with that timing, ask about deadlines. Like when, or, you know, when are things due? When is, when is my earnest deposit due? When, when am I going to hear back from the sellers? Don't just assume these type of things. These are things your, your agent can say. Um, but it seems like, you know, I've been doing this for a year now, going out with these buyers. A lot of the questions that I get asked is like things I can't really comment on. You know, and I, that's just something I want to touch on too. Like, if you have questions about neighborhood crime, schools, stuff like that, I can give you some resources that might help you investigate yourself. But I, you know, as agents, we can't we can't tell you. You know. Yeah, we we just, you know, the, the the telling you anything with the context of our opinion of it being good or bad, right, yeah. is, is what you're getting at. That's, that's you know, in large falls under this fair housing uh, mm -hmm. laws and violations that come from it, as they should, right? I mean, it's just too often thrown around of, like, this neighborhood's bad. Like, well, I think it's great. And that's, yeah. you know, that's, that, that's offensive. It's, 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 it's just, it's, it's common sense, but it's not, you know, because it is important. Um, you know, these are important purchases for people. And, you know, if they're not familiar with the neighborhood, for example, or the school district or whatever, like they want, rightfully so, they want to be familiar and they want to be comfortable. It's just like, it's all subjective, right? So it's just it's, we as agents can't just issue blanket statements that that cover um, objectivity when it's subjective. So, yeah. So. And in that same light, um, like 
conditions of a home. Well, we can give you the information that we have from the seller's property condition disclosures, right? Those are those are going to be attached. We can tell you about, you know, what the ages of uh, the roof is, if they give any information about appliances and stuff like that. But, you know, <clears throat> I I wouldn't feel comfortable telling you, you know, that's a good looking wall. Like I, you know, I, I'm not I'm not a I'm not yeah. an engineer. I'm not a home inspector. So yeah. that's the type of stuff that <clears throat> if you're concerned about that stuff, obviously you can be covered with the home inspection uh, or, you know, uh, there's different options for you. Yeah. Well, even, you know, not to get in the weeds, but even the home inspection concept is, is it's, they're there to evaluate at that moment, right? Yeah. So that does, they don't know what's behind the walls, for example. So yeah. it's just, you know, and again, not to, not to, make light of it by any means but it's just like it, there's there's risk involved no matter what so i mean you're you know getting a home inspection done is is for the purpose of essentially being comfortable with you know the risk that you're taking on as much as possible um again like it's a it's a deep end uh type of uh scenario i gave you but you have no idea what's behind the walls neither does a home inspector we can make fair assumptions that everything seems to be, you know, there's no water stains or anything like that currently, but yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Like, yeah, we can't tell you, Hey, yeah, you're not going to have any problems here. It's good to go. Good as gold. Right. Cause even mm -hmm. something newly constructed doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to, you know, be perfect. You yeah. know, usually on that end of the spectrum with a new build, like you're good to go. Um, but if, you know, you're working with a home builder who's never built a home before, different mm -hmm. story, right? So, yeah, that's a good point. Well, yeah, I was going to say, if you, <clears throat> if you do want to learn about houses and conditions and stuff that you should be looking for, you should probably be listening to the house school podcast, uh, with me, mm -hmm. uh, with my friend, Justin Kiesel from all County Home Inspections. Good plug. It was good stuff in there. So for sure, tune in. I mean, that's is, and it's, you know, stuff like that is totally relevant to today's market because unfortunately we're still in this uh, climate, whatever you want to call it, where like inspections are being waived and that's competitive advantage. So, mm -hmm. you know, what to look for while you're looking and not just enamored with layout and cosmetic condition type stuff. Don't get me wrong. That's important as it should be, but like, you know, if you are waiving an inspection, then you don't want to just totally wing it. So, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you looking at while you're there? Uh, yeah. If you can't get an offer accepted with that contingency, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, there's things that we can do too. Like, if uh, like for roofs, for example, obviously that's a huge expense. Some, you know, sometimes the uh, property condition disclosure the PCD is going to say unknown, but there's, you know, we can just we can help you make assumptions, right? Yeah. Like, hey, these people have owned this house for 20 years. They say it's unknown. So we're going to have to assume the worst here. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, just, you know, on that example, like, especially if you're in a neighborhood, it's easy to like be able to relate to roof condition, for example, right? Because if you're looking at this house that's right in front of you and it looks more worn than all the other houses and the house was built 30 years ago they're saying unknown well okay chances are these other roofs have been replaced doesn't look like this one has we're probably due for it yeah so there's there's you know there's just kind of um buying a home to a degree this sounds bad but the this process, no matter what, is somewhat of a leap of faith, right? Because, I mean, you have to be responsible for maintaining it moving forward as long as you own it. Mm -hmm. So it can be like your own neglect has caused repairs five years later, right? Or it can just be like, this is the useful life that's wearing out. And yeah, you got to deal with it. So. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Bottom line, like I said, I mean, Ask, ask, ask as many questions ask, as ask, yeah. Yeah. Get your money's get your money's worth out of us. 
I mean, if you're working with an agent where you're not comfortable with asking them questions, then it's probably not the right agent to be at, to to be working with. I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, like you said, Shane, just the the old you know third grade teacher type of stuff. There's no stupid question. I mean, I we always kind of lead with that in terms of like, look at you guys are gonna have more questions. Like as I'm as we're doing this podcast, I'm realizing like, man, like you know, like a lot of these questions don't come up because we're addressing them which sure. is great, but like, there's always still going to be more questions than you, that you're going to have that you should have that we just, you know, cover in the initial consultation. Right. So just, mm-hmm. yeah, you got to get them out there. And I always tell people like, Hey, look, you know, you leave an hour meeting on that consult, whatever, like, Hey, you know, we just talked about a lot, you know, your head's probably spinning, digest this, come back to me with a list of questions, please. So. Sure. yeah good stuff man this is uh this was good i love it i love it um yeah and at the end of the day just ask questions right make sure you get them answered so that's good so all right shane allen anthony butera team thanks for joining us we'll catch you next time thanks for tuning into the uh rochester real estate show podcast you can check us out anthony we'll see you next time see you